formal military dismissals under Don't Ask, Don't Tell started with the Clinton administration and continued through the Bush White House. Do you still text and drive? You could be ticketed for sending messages starting later this year. Once his competitive career was over, Klass decided to settle down, open his own school, and teach here at the University of Maryland, where hundreds of students take his classes each semester to learn the art of karate from one of the best in the field. You think this is easy? It's not. Learning the strategic moves of the sport can be a challenge. He was born legally blind and with cerebral palsy. He is still legally blind and has cerebral palsy, but he is now a rock star. He had no choice in the way that he was born. As for how he is now, it was destiny. Somewhere between 11 or 12, I decided what I wanted to do for a living. Uh, whether it was going to be playing drums or being a front man, that was yet to be decided. But now it is. 25-year-old Jesse McGee is the lead singer of Left Stronger, his rock band whose name reflects the cerebral palsy that affects the right side of his body. The hardest part of having a disability is, is basically the, the visual part. But this hasn't stopped him from forming Left Stronger, recording and producing his first album, and performing more than 26 shows, including Brands Head Live, in just over a year. And recently, he added a new accomplishment to the books. A track from Left Stronger's first album was chosen as the theme song for a new reality television show, Goodfellas. Premiering February 12th on Fox 45, the show will feature a cast of seven successful entrepreneurs and philanthropists, helping families in need in Baltimore. They're using a, a song off the record called Change the World. Um, it's a song that for me, I, I wrote about, basically, talks about the world in general and how some things need to change. And for Jesse, his songs do incorporate a deeper meaning. The message that this band wants to send is no matter what has happened to you, whether you're an alcoholic, a recovering drug addict, uh, someone who's you know, suffered through depression or a uh, bad child, whatever your story is, however bad your life may be or was, the idea is that whether you're in that moment now or you overcame it, the idea is that you can overcome it. But it's not only about performing and making his way up the music charts. In a sense, I'm not just doing this band stuff just because I want to be a rock star, but I basically want to be out there to talk to the next guy that had to deal with similar situations like I did and I could be a good voice for them. In Eldersburg, this is Valerie Bong for Patch. The economy may be in the red, but the demand for safe green vegetables remains a priority among consumers. With the growing popularity of community-supported agriculture, farmers are reaping the benefits of cutting out the middleman and providing fresh, from-the-ground vegetables directly into the hands of customers. Knowing the farmer is a substitute for organic because you're, you know, I know you as a farmer. I don't need you to be organic. I've been to your place, I know what you do, it's good enough for me. To participate in the CSA, consumers buy shares of produce from a farmer who offers a limited number to the public for the growing season, which usually runs from March to around June. The cost for garden fresh food runs on average $15 to $20 a week. It is more expensive, obviously, than what you get in a supermarket, but at the same time, I think you're getting a lot better quality food. From Maryland to California, the number of customers participating has grown to over 400,000. There are so many more people who want to buy local than there are farms willing to deliver. Last year, when we had our sign-up period that starts in August, we were full in six days. For consumers, though, it's not only about price. With health concerns about spinach, tomatoes, and recently pistachios, it's also a safety issue. I don't have to go into the store and wonder 
Okay, where did this come from? You know, how many airplane trips did this uh, package of lettuce take? Unlike a grocery store, the consumer also has a special interest in the success of the farm. The consumer gets to share in the risk of, of farm production. This shared risk can result in a win-win for both the farm and the consumer. Thanks for logging on. I'm Valerie Bonk with Friday's Patchcast. Wednesday's snowstorm left thousands without power and many cars abandoned on the side of the road as BGE works to restore more than 32,000 customers still out of power from the storm. BGE says there were more outages this year than during the 2010 blizzards. According to the National Weather Service, snow is in the forecast for later this evening and tomorrow morning. Stay tuned to your local patch for updates. More than 200 fire trucks and an estimated 3,000 mourners crowded the Cathedral of Mary Our Queen in North Baltimore Monday to honor Mark Falkenhan. He was the first firefighter in Baltimore County to die in line of duty since 1984. And on Tuesday morning, the Howard County Liquor Board shot down an application to sell beer at the Seven Star Food Mart in Savage. Many of the residents who testified against the liquor license said that alcohol would cause problems for the nearby elementary school. And in Columbia, no one was injured in a house fire Thursday afternoon. The fire which started in the attic was contained within 40 minutes. Investigators are looking into the cause of the blaze. The American Cancer Society officially kicked off its annual Westminster Relay for Life event on January 4th. For the next three and a half months, teams, individuals, and the Relay Committee will be working to raise money for the fight against cancer. An article today on Ellicott City Patch tells the story of how baseball fans braved icy temperatures last weekend to meet two legendary Baltimore Orioles. Ray Cubata, owner of the sports collectible store The Dugout Zone, sponsored the visit. And in Carroll County, a band of teens are working their way into fame, recording their first album this year and winning several Battle of the Band titles, all while giving back to the community. And that's a wrap on this week's major headlines. Tune in Monday at noon for the latest in local news. Now. What do we want? And when do we want it? Now. A crowd of more than 200 people gathered at the Capitol Friday, rallying to abolish Don't Ask, Don't Tell. They're hoping that a president who publicly opposed the ban and a Congress dominated by Democrats will conjure up enough votes to pass the Military Readiness Enhancement Act. This will in turn allow gay servicemen and women to serve openly in the military. Between 1997 and 2007, the Pentagon says that nearly 10,000 service members were discharged under this policy. I would tell anyone who tells me that we ought to retain Don't Ask, Don't Tell and also says, I support our troops. What you're really saying is, I support our troops, but not all of them. Admiral Greta Kammermeyer, one of over a dozen speakers, shared her story of how she was discharged from the military for disclosing her sexual orientation. For the past 16 years, we've been hearing that gays and lesbians in the military would undermine morale and discipline. Hello? How is that possible? There are 65,000 of us serving in the military today, and we are not undermining morale and discipline. Formal military dismissals under Don't Ask, Don't Tell started with the Clinton administration and continued through the Bush White House. According to rally organizers, American taxpayers have paid almost a billion dollars over the past six years to investigate, eliminate, and replace qualified patriotic service members whose sexual orientation violates policy guidelines. We don't do enough for our servicemen, and, and to treat these people with disrespect and to dishonor them because they're gay, it's, just, it's shameful. <laughs> Organizers and rally attendees say that their goal is for Congress to hear their voices and abolish Don't Ask, Don't Tell by the end of this year. 